powerful men in the world have come together to determine who is the world's strongest man. Now, let's meet the competitors. Boris Jurassic, AAU Hammer Throw Champion. Lars Hedlund, Swedish National Powerlift Champion. John Cole, guard, Pittsburgh Steelers. John Matusak, defensive end, Oakland Raiders. Ryan Oldfield, former shot foot champion. Ivan Putsky, professional wrestler. Don Reinhardt, the world record holder in the power lift. Gus Rethwich, a former national collegiate power lift champ. Jack Wright, former arm wrestling champion. And our defending titleist, Bruce Wilhelm. Welcome to the Universal Tour Center and the return of our World's Strongest Men competition. I'm Brent Musburger, and let me explain the rules of our competition and how we're going to pay our athletes. Ten strong men have been invited by the show's organizers upon the recommendation of experts in the area of strength. We'll have a total of ten events for the next ten weeks. Now, our first nine events, we are going to award points for finishing first through fifth. We will pay $50 a point. The winner of an individual event will get ten points, seven for finishing second, four for third, two for fourth, and a point for finishing fifth. Then our 10th event is a tug of war, and only our four point leaders will enter that competition with the points doubled to allow for a possible catch up on the final week. Then and when it's all over, we're going to award our top five finishers, bonuses totaling $25,000. Breaks down this way, 10,000 for first, 7,000 for second, 5,000 for third, 2,000 for fourth, and $1,000 for finishing fifth. But everyone walks away with at least something. We have guaranteed each of our strongmen $2,000 that will be worked off against points and monies earned during the individual events. And when our competition is all over, only one man will be holding up the world with his strong hands, and he'll be taking this trophy home with him. We are at the 225-pound level, and the first athlete up is a huge underdog, Boris Jurassic, born in Israel, now lives in New York, hammer throw champion. Now he can get it up to his chest in any manner that he wants. Then he can boost the barrel over his head and maintain control. 90 seconds to get the lift accomplished. Got a chance, and Jurassic will go to the next round, even though he weighs but 246 pounds. Now that may sound like a lot, but here come the big men. In the background there, that's Lars Hedlund. He's lieutenant in the Swedish Army. 302 pounds, working against 225. That whistle starts the clock. A year ago, the winning lift 250 pounds. To the top. Down. Next up is a heavyweight. Don Reinhardt, 344 pounds, is the biggest competitor. And according to all the judges and the people who know so much about strength and weightlifting, they say that Reinhardt is going to give Wilhelm all he wants. Did you see him get that up to his chest? Get a balance on it. That's a lead. Nothing to it for Reinhardt at 225. You better believe that Wilhelm is keeping an eye on Reinhardt, and Bruce will be up next. Wilhelm is a former shot put and discus champion who didn't turn to weightlifting until 1975. Then at the Montreal Olympics, he won the silver medal in the snatch. No trouble for Wilhelm. And another 300-pounder is due up, Gus Rethwich. He's a security guard at a hotel in Honolulu. He was born in the tiny town of Harper's Ferry, Iowa, population 200. Gus was an outstanding basketball and baseball player. And at the age of 14, he already weighed 185 pounds. But it wasn't until he was 27 that he took up weightlifting. I think Gus is ready. Come on, Gus. Yeah, 
There it is. Five athletes advance. And we move to 260 pounds, and the most amazing story is Boris Jurassi. Remember, he's in at 246 against these 300 pounders. As a hammer thrower, his personal best is 231 feet 7 inches. Now that's 30 feet short of a world record, but for a practice facility, this man has to use a parking lot. With that squat, he's able to get it to his chest. Wilhelm and Rethwish watching. This may just be too much for Boris. Can't do it. See, a couple of the judges are telling him he's got time. He's got just over a half a minute. Boris is going to try it. Inside of 30 seconds, he'll have to hurry. Run into it. 15 seconds. Down towards 10. Boris has got it. Boris Jirasi makes it as time runs out. I thought you were going to back up. How did I do the... that? I don't know how I did that. You walked up with that final burst of energy. You were getting ready to quit, weren't you? I was giving it up. That was it. I just ran. God, I don't believe it. Unbelievable. And here is Reinhardt. Now, he's a power lift champion. Lives in Fredonia, New York. I see his wife, Cynthia, off to the side here, yelling encouragement. And as a former power lift champion herself, she is also coaching Don through this event. You can hear Cynthia in the background yelling, steady, steady, as Big Don makes it look easy at 260. Here's the defending champion who knows now that his work is cut out. Looks like he's going to turn a somersault. Right to the top. Wilhelm beats his best of a year ago. One of the big men left. Here he is, Gus Ruthwish. He's done a little bit of everything. He was a service boxing champion while in the Navy during his days in Vietnam. Gus's technique demands nothing but muscle. Instead of rolling that barrel up his legs, he just tries to lift it to his chest. Gus can't get control. Gus is out, and three men go to the next round. A lift. They're at the 270 pound total. And here is Boris Jurassi, who has become the crowd favorite here because of his effort at 260 pounds. And Boris speaks Hebrew, Bulgarian, Russian, German. He's wondering what language 270 pounds will understand right now. Some of our other competitors there in the background. Our judges watching carefully. You see that Jurassic gets this barrel up above his head and maintains control. Have to keep going. He's got time. Get it up there. And Boris bows out, and I think this time he will pass on a rematch. So Jurassic is out. Here's Don Reinhardt. Reinhardt holds the world and American records in the squat, 934 pounds. 
the deadlift, 885 pounds. He did have the bench press record of 606. Doug Young of Texas recently took that away at 610. Donnie going for the world mark in the barrel lift. May have it, and indeed he does at 270 pounds. And what is going through Bruce Wilhelm's head right now? Last year he won this at 250, and suddenly he's matched against 20 pounds more than his championship total of a year ago. <laughs> Ryan Howd watching. Squaring off that awkward weight. Liquid and shot in there, up on top of his head. Going for the burst. No control, the judges say. Not up long enough. Reinhardt's our winner. Nine strength competitions to go. Reinhardt leading Wilhelm and Jurassic. Rethwish and Hedlund, fourth and fifth. Two five-man heats. John Matusak and John Kolb, our football players, are side by side. Jack Wright, the arm wrestling champion. Ivan Putzke, that's it. Scratch your nose a little bit there, Ivan. And Brian Ofield, who was sixth at the shot put at the Munich Olympics in 72. Now, they must get the ends of that bar to within at least eight inches of each other. Do you see what Ofield's doing holding it down? That's a measuring device in front of each of our competitors. Wright's got to go back and try it a little more. John Kolb, he's within eight inches. So is John Matusak. So all five of these competitors will go to the next round. And our second heat's got our heavyweights. Don Reinhardt, who won the barrel lift. Boris Jurassi, years last year's overall winner, Bruce Wilhelm. Gus Ruthwish, looking serious, isn't he? Next to Gus, Lars Hedlund, the lieutenant from the Swedish Army. 60 seconds, Hal Connolly, the director of events, will blow the whistle to start them. And remember now, they must keep those hands down on the ends of the bars. They cannot drape their arms over them. No trouble for Big Don. There's Gus. Wait a minute. Don's putting that back up on his neck. I guess he didn't think it was close enough yet. There's Wilhelm. He's well within the limit. Jurassic gets it off from his neck. Now Reinhardt's got a problem. He can't get the bar. <laughs> Jurassic with a helping hand. Headland good. Breathwitch good. Don, I have detected one problem. When you bend the steel <laughs> bar, you can't get it back off your neck. You're going to have to change the technique. <laughs> I think as it gets thicker, I won't have that problem, Brett. <laughs> so Matusak is on the right, 5 8 inches. The bar this time, and remember, you cannot use any part of your body when you're bending it. Brian Oldfield and Ivan Putsky, Jack Wright. This figures to be a struggle because this determined our champion of a year ago. Can anyone get the ends of that bar to within at least eight inches? You see the time left. Down inside of 20 seconds to go. Here's Oldfield, watch him. Even when he's under pressure, he'll give you a little of a clown. Matusak's got one end over there on his right leg. And here comes one of the judges John, uh, you had the best bend, but uh, Russ Nip, one of the judges, came up and disqualified you. Why? Brent, I don't blame him. I was uh, struggling with it, and I was just trying to get it bent as much as possible. And I got down, and I was on my leg, and you're not supposed to even have your legs to have anything to do with it. So he, he made a good call. Now the other heat. With that bar at 5 eighths inches. Wilhelm not encountering any trouble. He's doing much better than he did last year. And look at the big man. Oh, Reinhardt. How did he do it that easily with that thickness at five-eighths of an inch? That's going to make him the favorite. Here's Rutwick, the bouncer from a hotel in Honolulu. And Lars Hedlund. So now they will measure. That's the time left for Boris Jurassic. And for Gus Ruthwish, down toward 20 seconds. <laughs> Wilhelm will make it. Okay, 
Bruce trying to tell Hal Connolly that after he gets the two ends to within eight inches around his neck, it'll spring back. And meanwhile, Rethwish is still trying to qualify, and that's the end of it. Three strong men are still bending in the steel bar competition. 11 sixteenths of an inch in thickness. Don Reinhardt on the right, Bruce Wilhelm in the middle, and Lars Hedlund on the left. A 60-second time limit. Reinhardt, oh, he took his hands off the ends of the bar. He's been disqualified. He is out. We are down to Wilhelm and Hedlund. The steel bar is winning right now. Boy, that disqualification is going to hurt Reinhardt because he could have taken a two-week lead. Down toward the final 10 seconds. Al Conley and the judges are going to have to measure to determine a winner here unless Hedlund can get a bit further because it is close. There it is. Time's up. <laughs> Lars can't believe that bar didn't give any more than that. Reinhardt disqualified when he went to the forearms on the end of the steel bar. Hal Connolly now has talked to the judges, and he's got the winner for us. The, offic the officials have checked the bars very carefully, and they have determined without a question of a doubt that it is a tie. All right, that's shared with us. <laughs> and what the two share are 17 points. Splitting first and second. Don Reinhardt third, John Cole fourth, and Gus Rethwish is fifth. Our top five strongmen after two weeks. Don Reinhardt and Bruce Wilhelm tied, and oh, how that disqualification hurt Don. Lars Hedlund, Boris Jurassic, and Gus Rethwish round out the first five. Quite simple. Each of our strongmen allowed two preliminary tosses, and then the top five will go to a one-toss throw-off for the championship. You're looking at big John Matusak of the Oakland Raiders, his second preliminary toss. There are our five leaders. So Hedlund really is sitting on the bubble, as they refer to it at Indianapolis. Russ Nip, Tommy Kono, some of our other judges are out there for the measurement. And John Matusak now sitting in fifth place. There's Reinhardt, one of our leaders. There it is, 32, two and a half. Matusak now in fifth. Here is Jack Wright. He's a former arm wrestling champion. He needs a little more speed. Each of these athletes allowed to turn one and a half times in that circle. That's not enough power. Wright is not going to be a factor. So he will miss with his second preliminary toss, and he will not get into the final. Now, there's the man who should win it, Brian Oldfield. He is a great shot putter. He knows how to generate strength and power right here with his turn. That's a good throw by Oldfield. That's out there at that 40 foot mark. You bet Brian knows he's got something going. 41, two and a half. So he'll go to our final for sure. Big Brian Oldfield. Uh, Brian, have you been the tossing tires in your spare time? Is that why you're so I can't even change a tire. I'm just amazed that this conforms so well to my style of throwing. <laughs> Listen, well, you said this was going to be your event. You were right. I have got to do something right. <laughs> Thank you. As a pro, Brian was able to put the shot 75 feet. Here's a look at the style that enabled him to set that incredible mark. As a shot putter, how much weight did you lift, and how important was it to a shot putter to work with the weights? Well, I learned from a lot of uh, strong men, you know, from the early 60s shot put training with Perry O'Brien and what have you. They started to develop the strength training for the shot put, and for a long time, I thought that that was the only way to go, and I got up to about 280 pounds, and I threw over 75 feet. I weigh 245 now, and I'm almost throwing that far. It, it, it's more impeccable character. I am, I am more just a thrower now instead of a weightlifter-thrower combination. Just one final quick question for you, Brian O'Fee. A lot of talk about sex with football players and soccer players. The world's strongest men competition, uh, do you believe in sex the night before the refrigerator race? Some people say that sex is, is good for you because it keeps you out of the refrigerator. And a look again at Brian Oldfield's powerful technique in the tire toss. He is our leader right now. So here's Ivan Putsky, the wrestler. Not yet on our leaderboard. And that's going to be a foul. Hal Conley picks it up immediately. Left foot over the white line. 
Don Reinhardt foul with his first toss. Boris Jurassic is up right now. He should do extremely well in this for two reasons. Number one, he's a hammer throw champion, so he will understand how to generate power with his revolutions inside the circle. But number two, do you know where he practices the hammer toss? In a parking lot in Brooklyn. He knows all about asphalt. Good throw out there around 40 feet. Not as far as his 40 foot six inches with his first toss, but Boris Jurassic, no doubt, is going to go to the final. And remember, these preliminary figures don't count in the finals. Gus Ruthwish. He is a bouncer at a hotel in Hawaii. But it's not all physical with Gus, because if you want to sit down and negotiate, he also holds a degree in political science from the University of Hawaii. Gus will go to the one-handed technique with the tire. Remember, Matusak is in fifth, 32, two and a half, and that's going to be very close. Looks like it was out around 35 feet. Judges are measuring, and it's 35 feet exactly. So Rethwish has pushed Matusak out of the top five, and here's the man in fifth, John Kolb, the lineman from the Pittsburgh Steelers. 34 feet, 10 inches, his first toss. That one not nearly that far. Got over too far with his throw before he let go. So there you see our five leaders. Now, Don Reinhardt is coming up after Kolb. He fouled the first time, tied for the lead coming into this event. So the pressure's on. And he must exceed Kolb's 34 feet 10 inches. Reinhardt from Fredonia, New York, has spent the last three months in preparation for taking the crown away from Bruce Wilhelm. Looks like a good toss. That's out around 35, 36 feet. There it is. Don Reinhardt yeah. jumps into the top five. Rethwich is now in fifth place. And here's Lars Hedlund. He's a Swedish national powerlifting champion, lieutenant in the Swedish Army. Rather amused that he has to throw a tire. Said he'd never encountered such an event as this. Let's see what kind of a style he comes up with. A little bit of a wobbler. And that's not going to be good enough for Lars Hedlund. He's one of our big men, though. 6'3", 302 pounds. And now Lars can sit down over there, get a little shade, and watch our defending champion go to work. Here's Bruce Wilhelm. This was not one of Bruce's good events a year ago. So a couple of used tires, a vacant lot, and a few practice hours. And this year, Bruce Wilhelm goes to the finals. And we'll be right back. Here's your host, Brent Musburger. Back with the finals of the tire toss at the world's strongest men competition, Gus Ruthwish getting ready. And when you think of sudden death, this is it. Nothing that these five finalists did in the preliminary heats means a thing right now. It's a one-toss shootout. 6'4", 325 pounds of power. Out around 35 feet. Tommy Kono out there with John Turpak measuring. Al Conley will call out the figure. There it is, 34, four and a half for Big Gus. And here is Don Reinhout. Boy, clothing manufacturers must love to see these guys come through the door. Imagine the yards of cloth that it takes just to cover a big man up like that. Oh, good explosion that time by Don. That is by far his best toss. 41, five and a half. And Bruce Wilhelm is under pressure right now. He came into event number three, tied with Reinhardt for first place. Bruce is ideally suited for a strong men competition. 
He's big, strong, and he is also quick, extremely quick for his size. He goes out after Reinhardt, but that's going to be short. Don Reinhardt will take the overall lead, regardless of who wins the tire toss. There's his distance, 37 feet, 7 and 3 quarters inches. Three finalists in, Reinhardt leading. Boris Jurassi. Hammer throw champion. In the preliminary round, he was out at 40 feet, so he's got a chance here. And that toss not as good as the one he turned in earlier. So Boris will not be happy with that effort. 37 feet, seven and a half inches. He's capable of doing much better, and he knows it. One competitor left, and he's the favorite. Brian Oldfield. Oh, magnificent explosion by Oldfield. He's out around 42 feet. Great throw by Brian. He is going to win our tire toss. Uh, Dr. Wilhelm was over there uh, laughing and jiving a little bit while you were rotating, but that didn't throw you off bed, did it? Not a bit. Uh, Quick was in this time, Quake was out. <laughs> it's nice to see your name go up there on the numbers board down there, Brian. I need the bucks. All right, Don, come over here. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank man. you. You put the pressure on me. <laughs> Not only that, Don, but now you have taken overall first place oh, after three I'm, weeks. I'm happy about that. <laughs> right, can, you, can you keep it up now? We'll I'm going to try. This, this competition is so good. Everybody is great that it can go to anybody. So yeah. we'll just give it the best shot we got. Brian. Still, I want my mother to see this one. Mom, watch. <laughs> see the <laughs> difference? <laughs> and Oldfield's winning toss, a world record, 42 feet 9 inches. And after three weeks of competition, Reinhardt leading Wilhelm by three points. Oldfield jumps up into third place. Headland is fourth. Jurassi is fifth. Ruthwish now in sixth place. And in seventh, John Kolb with two points. You see, this is not the ordinary automobile. This is the 1916 Maxwell, which Jack Benny used in his television performance. We also have Columbo's automobile, the car that Paul Newman drove in the Sting, so let's take a look at the leaderboard before we start the car lift. And after three weeks, our defending champion, Bruce Wilhelms, in second place. Three points back of Don Reinhout. Now the man up in the car lift is our professional wrestler, Ivan Putsky. The gross weight of the car is 1,800 pounds. They just have to lift those wheels up off the ground into a full lock position. Come on, Ivan, he's got it. Russ Nip, the judge, right behind him. Our director of this event, Hal Conley, looking on. And here's Lars Hedlund getting a little power out of the sun. Lieutenant the Swedish Army. He's one of our 300-pound buffaloes. Ah! And Lars Hedlund will go to the next round. You would think that the big men would hold the advantage in this competition, and here's one of them. John Matusak of the Oakland Raiders won a Super Bowl ring a couple of years ago when the Raiders beat Minnesota. He was handling those Viking offensive linemen that day. Now he's struggling with this car. He's got it. John Matusak will go to the next round. He looks a little weary after that lift. Hey, here's a guy you got to go through to get at Terry Bradshaw. John Cole with the Pittsburgh Steelers out of Oklahoma State. Weightlifter, wrestler, fine all-around athlete. Now he's got to get Jack Benny's wheels up off the ground. Easily. Oh. Nip come to bring it down after that locked position is established for the rest of our judges. We go to round two. 2,040 pounds is the gross weight of the automobile. Gus Rethwish. You know, of all our competitors, he is known as the quiet man. Doesn't say much. Then he just gets up there and he explodes with the brute strength. A former powerlift champion. And Gus will go to the next round. That car they're lifting this time was in the movie The Sting. Paul Newman and Robert Redford drove it around town. But when you're lifting it, you can't con it. And here's Boris Jurassic, who at 5'10 and a half weighs 245 pounds. And pound for pound, all the competitors will tell you, this man is the strongest. Watch here how he gets leverage, uses his entire body competing against all these 300 pounders. And I got a bet on Jurassic. There it is. Oh. And Boris will go to the next round. Now, here come the Buffaloes. Bruce Wilhelm, 
about 320 pounds after a good breakfast. Last year's champion. And Bruce goes on. But Bruce is keeping an eye on this next fella. Don Reinhardt from Fredonia, New York. That's upstate New York. He holds 24 world records in weightlifting. And for the last few months, he's been concentrating on only one thing. Get that title away from Bruce Wilhelm. And that training's been successful so far, hasn't it? And the next obstacle for our athletes, Columbo's car. Round three of the car lift. The gross weight is approximate, 2,340 pounds, so we've added 300 pounds for Ivan Putski, who at 39 years old will go no further in the car lift. Already we've eliminated three others, Wright, Oldfield, Matusak. Here is Lars Hedlund, 29 years old, the lieutenant from Sweden. 90-second time limit. Just about had that right wheel up off the ground about a half inch. Trying to get energy for one quick burst of power. And the car wins. Hedlund retires. John Kolb will try it. 30 years old. This is the car that Peter Falk drove during his popular television series, Columbo. Look at Kolb's right hand. He will try to come up underneath the bar. Judge Russ Nip looking on. Bob Zuver, our commissioner of apparatus, stands close by. We'll watch these athletes carefully. Not moving. And Kolb is out. Now here's Gus Ruthwish. And you would have to think that our powerlift champions like Big Gus and also Don Reinhardt would have a good chance. Must lift the wheels up off the ground and establish a full locked position with those shoulders, arms, and legs. Gus will come over the top. He had that right one moving. Gus backing away. Let's see if he quits. No, he was listening to Hal Conley telling him there's still time. So he's going to stay with it. Notice how tightly those belts are around these lifters' waists. Got a shot. Come on, Gus. Come on, Gus. Couldn't quite do it. Look out, somebody better get up there. I think he's blacking out. There's Hal Conley. There's Dr. Leroy Perry right there. They've got some oxygen here in the back. Stay tuned. Now, here's your host, Brent Musburger. Boris Jurassic, our next competitor. Gus is all right. Gus going to be okay, but boy, so far, this car is really winning, isn't it? Jurassic's 26 years old, now lives in Brooklyn. Watch how he places his hands. Underneath. How much time, please? 2340, the gross weight. After Jurassi, Wilhelm and Reinhardt. No one has yet succeeded with this weight. Look at that strength of Jurassi. Can't do it, but he had that right tire moving. So here is Wilhelm. Can anybody? successfully lift this weight. Here's our defending champion. You'll come underneath. 
He's got a shot. Bruce Wilhelm has done it. The first straw man to succeed with that car. Now the heat's on Don Reinhardt. And here's Donnie. Underneath like Wilhelm. And there he is. Reinhardt goes on. So now let's see what Hal Conley and the judges decide to do. Wilhelm is telling him that he'll pass. Bruce Wilhelm has bowed out. He'll settle for the tie. Reinhardt says, oh, wait a minute. There'll be no tie. Add five pounds and let's go. So Reinhardt going for the 10 points. Already leads last year's champion. Let's see if he can pick up a few more points. This would establish a world record for Reinhardt in this event. Here he comes. He's got it. John Reinhardt has won the event and set a record in the process. Fantastic effort by Big Donnie. Congratulations. Oh, Donnie. thank you. Sensational effort coming back. Well, I got pushed a little bit and uh, just I had to, you know, work a little bit myself today. So, thank you. One more look at Donnie's fabulous effort. And for capturing the car lift, he picks up 10 points. Bruce Wilhelm, seven for second. Putzky, Hedlund, Cole, Rethwish, and Jurassic split the rest of the points. And after four weeks of the world's strongest men competition, Reinhard now leads Bruce Wilhelm by six points. Working against the clock, they'll come up in two-man heats, and the fastest time overall wins this competition. Heat number one, Jack Wright against John Matusak of the Oakland Raiders. You would think that this would be an event that football players would love. Oh, Wright slips at the start. Now he's coming back with a wheelbarrow, but Matusak is off to a good start. If he can keep it straight, he's going to win this heat easily. The elapsed time at the bottom of your screen. That's a good winning time by John Matusak as Jack Wright also finishes up. The football background did it, right? Brent, it helps a little bit that uh, Tom Doms makes us work so hard on the, on the sled, but we'll see how the time turns out. Now, you are the first one to come up the hill. What's it going to be like for the rest of the competitors? Well, it's going to get a little warmer as it goes on, so the best thing to do is be go right along in the competition, Brent, because it's, it's heavy and it's hard to control. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Brent. All right, Wright turned in at 21-3-4. So the second heat, Brian Oldfield against Boris Jurassi. Oldfield, the shot put record holder. Jurassi, the hammer throw champion. They're shooting at a two set, 16-10. Off to an even start. Now it's Jurassi with a burst up that hill. Look at Boris Jurassi come with that 750-pound wheelbarrow. 100 feet from start to finish. He's got a shot at Matusak, 16-10. Boris is our new leader. 15.84. And a mighty roar of triumph for Jurassic. Way to go. <laughs> Good run out there. <laughs> Yelling encouragement to yourself, no. Oh, you just got to yell, man. <laughs> yeah, we're so close about halfway up. Could you uh, see him out of the corner of your eye? Yeah, I was looking at him, but I was starting to veer. And I didn't like that, but I just kept yelling and pushing like... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, boy. Thank you. You see the crowd in behind Boris Jurassi? More folks watching him push a wheelbarrow than throw the hammer. And I asked him if that affected him as a competitor. Well, it affects you a lot. It certainly does. I mean, most of the meets that I throw in year round, there's nobody watching, just a handful of people. Um, when you do get to the big meets like the U.S., USSR meet and the meets in Europe, those are the meets that you look forward to. And where you have the 25, 30,000 crowd to throw, to throw in front of, right in the middle of the field, and they're screaming and yelling. And for those few moments is really what you ruin your whole life for. <laughs> Tell me about that famous practice facility that you've got. <laughs> Marine Park parking lot is probably one of the best training facilities in the United States right now. It's certainly one of the most famous. <laughs> uh, I've had a lot of publicity on that facility. Uh, it's in Brooklyn, New York, as you know, and it's uh, 
you know, quiet little place out of the way, one of the few areas in the New, in the New York area where you can throw the hammer. Oldfield's time, 16.75, and Jurassic's amazing 15.84 is the one that Gus Ruthwich in the red and John Cole with the Pittsburgh Steelers in the yellow will be shooting at. Off to an even start. Cole with a slight lead. Ruthwish coming on strongly. Got out of control for just a moment on John. Ruthwich. He's going to have a terrific time, and so too is Cole. Ruthwich, 13, 6, 7, 8. Cole in 15.16. It's even more impressive the second time around. Off to an even start. Cole Van Ruthwich, dual and all the way. Got to about the 30-foot mark, and Gus just exploded with a mighty burst. Amazing time. <laughs> you handled that rather calmly. You haven't even broken a sweat. That's about as easy as I've seen anyone take this. I'll handle my share of cement, my day. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it's like? A big load of cement coming uphill, right? About. Just drop it in and get the foundation going. That's right. <laughs> all right, Gus. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Brent. How we stand right now. Ruthwish with the lead. And John Kolb is in second. And we'll be back with the conclusion of the wheelbarrow race. Ivan Putski matched against Lars Hedlund of Sweden. The time to beat that amazing 13.67 turned in by Gus Ruthwish. Hedlund with the lead. Putski now is pulling up. He is leaving the course. And Hedlund is coming on up against that clock. Here is Lars Hedlund. Hits the finish line in 15.58. Meanwhile, there's Dr. Leroy Perry looking at Putsky's leg. Does not appear to be serious. Do you practice any kind of these events over in Sweden? Do they no. have wheelbarrow races? No, they aren't. <laughs> it's the first time I was doing it. It's very tough. And not bad for the first time you've ever pushed a 750-pound wheelbarrow 100 feet uphill. Now, I had a chance to talk to Dr. Leroy Perry, and I think you will enjoy the conversation. Anytime you get a group of world-class athletes together, you got to have somebody to keep them going. And, Dr. Perry, you've been working overtime with some of them. These men are real gentlemen and real hard competitors, and I think people out there should really understand that this is true competition. It isn't just playing around. This is real competition. A lot of physiological stress, and these people have really been working hard at taking care of them. Dr. Perry, I know that you're quite familiar with the Los Angeles Dodgers and the baseball players. Now, here you're working with 300-pound weightlifters. Is there any difference? Uh, do, are their needs any different? You have a lot more muscle mass, and their frames are, of course, a lot, lot larger. And uh, some of our taping procedures and brace supports and things we've used, all preventatively. But basically, uh, other than the fact that they're three times the size of a normal athlete, everything's pretty much the same. Doctor, I feel great. I've been taking your advice. Well... You're a good specimen there, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. Okay. And here come two other marvelous specimens up that hill. The two big guys who are running one, two in the competition right now. And the time to beat, 13.67. What a match this figures to be. Over there on the left, Don Reinhout leading our defending champion, Bruce Wilhelm, by six points. Wilhelm won this event a year ago. Here they come. Reinhardt is away well. If he can keep it straight and keep on coming, he's having trouble. He has slipped, and Wilhelm will win this heat easily. But what kind of a time will he turn in? Reinhardt coming back unofficially. Wilhelm's got an amazing time there. 13-4-1. Fantastic. Already, Gus Ruthwish is in officially at 13.67. Let's take another look at Reinhardt got off smoothly and then suddenly he just slipped and that allowed Wilhelm to continue right up the hill and even though he wasn't forced he turned in a great time this uh, you said this was harder than last year yeah I think we've been sandbagged on this I wasn't breathing this hard last year I'm in better shape it was more difficult. I don't know what the story is. Yeah, but you know, you were in trouble, and Don, what happened? You just lose control? I guess I was going too fast and lost control, that's all. Because you were watching carefully when they were coming up that hill, because you had by far the best time. Thank you. I think the only way to do it is to, <laughs> to Bruce and I to have a runoff, so maybe we can keep him quiet for a while. Uh, this man isn't even able to keep he up had, with me. He, he looks has, like a whale himself. He has challenged you to go back down there and do it again <laughs> head to head. Now, I know that's not how the rules state. Dude. Would you accept that challenge? I would accept the challenge with knives, chains, darts, you name it. There's nothing. I'm not ready. You want to go back ready. down and have another? I'm ready. All right. 
13-4-1 is officially the first place time at 13-6-7. Gus's time is second, but he wants to go back down and do it again. I win. I'm the champion. I don't have to play with these hot dogs. And so, big Bruce Wilhelm successfully defends his championship in the wheelbarrow race. Gus Rethwish winds up second. After five weeks of our competition, Wilhelm is our leader, but Don Reinhardt continues to stalk him. Chris Jurassi, AAU hammer throw champion. Lars Hedlund, Swedish national powerlift champion. John Cole, guard, Pittsburgh Steelers. John Matusak, defensive end, Oakland Raiders. Brian Oldfield, former shot put champion. Ivan Putsky, professional wrestler. Don Reinhardt, the world record holder in the power lift. Gus Rethwish, a former national collegiate power lift champ. Jack Wright, former arm wrestling champion. And our defending titleist, Bruce Wilhelm. Hello again, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger, and welcome to the Universal Studios Tour Center, the setting for our strong men competition. Each of our 10 athletes guaranteed $2,000, but they can earn bonus money totaling $25,000. And we've got weekly prize money worth $1,200. Our next event for the World's Strongest Men Competition, Commissioner of Power Terry Todd, is the traditional girl lift. We've got some lovely members of the Los Angeles cheerleading squad and such an interesting apparatus here. Why don't you go demonstrate it for me? Well, Brent, uh, it's a hot afternoon, and my family, my wife, handles the heavy work. Your wife handles the heavy yes, work? Yes, maybe Jan could show us how it's done. All right, here is Jan Todd, actually a world-renowned weightlifter and perhaps the strongest woman in the world. Yes, Jan holds... Uh, most of the weightlifting records for women. In the squat, she's about 100 pounds of the next heaviest. This is 415 pounds here. Right! Oh, okay. Dan! Dan, come on over here. <laughs> Terry really does make you move the refrigerators and everything, right? Listen, we moved recently, and he had a sore back the whole time. <laughs> you know, I was looking at you and thinking what we ought to do someday is have a world's strongest women competition. Well, you know, I think that would be, I think there'd be a great deal of interest in that. There are an awful lot of women in the world now who are training with weights, and a lot of girls in other sports who are very, very strong, too. And I think it would be pretty interesting to see how it came out. The first event was the barrel lift. It was extremely awkward. Liquid and shot inside, and big Don Reinhardt immediately served notice to Bruce Wilhelm that he was out after his championship this year. 270 pounds, and against the clock, Reinhardt was able to lift it to the top and lock for 10 points in the first week of our competition. The second event, the steel bar bend. They got down to 11 16 inches in diameter. Lars Hedlund on the left and Bruce Wilhelm on the right. And these two 300 pounders wound up with a dead heat victory. They split first and second. The third event was the tire toss and the favorite the shot put champion, Brian Oldfield, heaved it 42 feet, nine inches for the title, the car lift. Again, it was big Don Reinhardt, 2,345 pounds. The fifth event, the wheelbarrow race, for the second year in a row, it was big Bruce Wilhelm to the top first. Let's take a look at the leaderboard right now before we start the girl lift. Halfway home in the strongman competition and our defending champion, Bruce Wilhelm, leads Don Reinhardt by four points. That's a battle at the top between those two, isn't it? Now, all of our strong men made it at 445 pounds here in the girl lift, so we've added one to those pretty cheerleaders. Now the total weight's 570 pounds. Right, now, the girls don't weigh that much. Each of them weighs 125 pounds, and the rest of the weight's dead weight, and here's Ivan Putsky. And he pushes it right back up to the top. The rules are quite simple. They bring the weight down to a certain level, depending upon their height, and then they must hoist it back up to the top. Now here's Don Reinhardt. This man holds 25 world records in weightlifting. He should handle this easily, and he does. Now we're gonna show you one of the most amazing athletes in our competition. Hammer throw champion by the name of Boris Jurassi. Why is he amazing? He gives away 100 pounds. He weighs only 240. Some of those buffalo are in at about 320, 330. He will use it all, and he'll just keep right on going. Right there. He has become a huge crowd favorite in our competition this year. 
And here's our European competitor, Lars Hedlund, lieutenant in the Swedish Army. Powerlift champion from that country. He's really been enjoying himself in this and doing a good job, too, I might add. Touch. Nothing to it. Now the quiet man is due up from Hawaii. Gus Ruthwish, powerlift champion. He has a degree in political science from the University of Hawaii. And he also hoists 570 pounds without any difficulty. Now the defending champion, Bruce Wilhelm, been a little bit quieter this year than he was a year ago. I think it's because of that pressure from Don Reinhardt. Wilhelm is in for a battle the rest of the way, and he knows it. No trouble there. Now, at 570, we had some who did not make it as Bruce and the others did. Jack Wright bowed out. So, too, did Brian Oldfield. John Matusak couldn't make it. Nor could John Cole. When we went to 680 pounds, only Ivan Putsky failed. So now, we will go to 750 pounds. Four girls plus 70 additional pounds right there being added. Michelle Turner, Cindy Landis, Debbie Kitzmiller, and Beverly Jean of the Los Angeles Rams cheerleading squad are ready. And here is Don Reinhardt, the power lifter. 750 pound total. I had a chance to talk to Don about the difference between Olympic lifting and power lifting. And here's what he had to say. I, I would say basically power lifting is more for brute power. And uh, uh, Olympic lifting is more technique and it's more finesse which is involved with it. And of course power lifting is we lift more weights and uh, I think a pound for pound we're stronger people. Too. Should power lifting become a part of the Olympics? Would you like to see that? Definitely, and I think in, a, in the future it uh, definitely will be because it's, it's a very popular sport. You know, I've watched you compete so far, and I said to myself, there's somebody who planned for these particular events. You've had your eye on this. Yes, I have. This is uh, very important to me, and of course it's an honor for me to be here, and I'm not only representing myself, but I'm representing the, the great sport of pirate thing. And representing that sport quite well. All right, timekeeper Bob Heiss says we're ready to go again. 750-pound level in the girl left. Reinhardt already has advanced. Boris Jurassic is the next athlete due up. Now alongside, when we pull back, you'll see a couple of our judges, John Turpak and also Tommy Kono, standing close by to help the athletes. There's Bob Zuver also on the right-hand side. He's the chairman of the apparatus. The key here is once you start the lift, don't stop. 750 pounds and don't let it rest on your back. Just move right on through it. All right, here he comes. He's got a chance, and he'll make it. Boris Jurassic advances to the next round. Big favorite with the crowd. Cheerleaders like him, too. <laughs> They're getting quite a ride, and it's a little warm out here in Southern California this afternoon. And here's Lars Hedlund of Sweden. He weighs just over 300 pounds, so he will be tangling with a weight that's twice his size. He'll get ready, and the judges will release the weight. Here he comes. No, oh, he can't stop like that down there. He'll never get that weight going again. Mr. Terry Todd agrees. And so Gus Ruthwish is next. And after watching Hedlund's problem, you can bet that Gus will attempt to keep that weight moving once it starts. He's got a shot. Bruce Wilhelm coming up. Hey, Big Gus looks a little weary after that, doesn't he? Here's Bruce. Bruce is being given the same advice that Gus received. Don't stop once you get the weight to the bottom. Tremendous burden on those shoulders. Can you imagine the strength that you've got to have up there? And Wilhelm made it look easy. So let's add a little weight here, folks. Susan James of the Los Angeles Rams cheerleading squad coming up in 790 pounds when we come back.
level at the girl lift in the world's strongest men competition. Don Reinhout is up. You know, he's a graduate of Hamill College. He's a professional accountant working for the United States government. And with all the world records that he's established, you'd have to be an accountant just to keep track of them. Here he comes. He comes through it with ease. Don Reinhardt. Hard to believe that Boris Jirasi is still in this competition. Here he is, 790 pounds he's working against. Boris, 26 years old, lives in Brooklyn. He is a probable member of the United States Olympic team for the games coming up in Moscow. Holds dual citizenship in the United States and Israel. Marvelous hammer throw champion. Taking time, getting set. You know, besides the muscles up there in the shoulders and the upper arms, just think about the burden on the legs when you squat down. Here he comes. It's moving. And now he can't do it once you stop like that. Boris Jurassi is out. Now, wait a minute. Time is not up. He's coming right back. This guy, he just won't quit on you. He did the same thing in the barrel lift and made it. Is he going to do it again? Let's see what happens. Oh, this is almost impossible. 790 pounds just to push it to the top. And that's it. Oh, you talk about an effort. And the crowd here appreciates it. Gus Ruthwish. And as you have seen demonstrated in this competition, one of the keys is don't stop at the bottom. Easier said than done, folks. That's 790 pounds coming down on top of you. With a burst, he's in trouble. That's like trying to push a building straight up now. And Rethwich bows out. Only one man left who can tie Don Reinhardt. And Bruce is telling the cheerleaders, uh, jump up just a little bit, girls, and help me out. I don't know, Bruce made the last one look awfully easy. Now I'd have to like his chances right here. Takes a wide stance. Here he comes. In trouble. The weight is now a dead one. One more effort for Wilhelm. But that's it. Bruce Wilhelm is conceding. And so the winner of the girl lift at an amazing 790 pounds is Don Reinhardt. And Wilhelm has to settle for a tie with Rethwish and Jurassic. And as a result of picking up those 10 points right now, well, Don Reinhardt has jumped back into the overall lead. It will wheel a total of 125 pounds up a total of 10 feet. And here's our commissioner of power already up at the top, Terry Todd. Terry, this is going to call upon a lot of different muscles. Yes. This tests the muscles of the hand, the wrist, and the forearm. Grant, it's a test of strength as well as endurance. I think some of the smaller men will have a good shot at this one. All right. Jack Wright on the left. Ryan Oldfield on the right will be in our first team. 125 pounds, 10 feet to the top. Time to event. Wright, a former wrist wrestling champion, with Reinhardt watching. Oldfield, 6'5", 33 years old, trailing Wright right now. Wright with a slight lead. The elapsed time, you can see. Oldfield coming back. Brian Oldfield now has taken a lead. Wright is struggling. For emphasis, 33-12 for Brian Oldfield, our first winner. Wright's time, 40.11. A football showdown. How many times have these two guys do it? Matusak of the Raiders on the left, Kolb of the Steelers on the right. Oh, John Kolb is away sensationally. 
make it cold, bring this weight on. Two feet to go. 15 seconds. 16. Incredible. Our winning time of a year ago was 31 seconds. And that has got to discourage big John Matusak. A little over two feet to go for Matusak, and the other man's already done. And John says, I'm just not even going to bother to finish with it right now. Unbelievable by Cole. John, that was unbelievable. No one last year even came close to 18 seconds. 18 seconds, I don't know. We have one of these in the gym at home. I have a six-year-old boy, and he likes to play with it. And I always holler at him, you know, if he quits. So I figured he'd see this, and he'd holler at me if I quit. <laughs> so there was no chance that John Cole was backing out on this no, one. You can't let your own boy holler at you. i got to tell you right now that it would take an unbelievable effort in one of the next few heats to beat you. Well, it's, uh, it's about time the ballplayers did something like this. Exactly. Thanks, John. Yeah, thank you. Still hard for me to believe, as you look at Lars Hedlund, that John Kolb could do this in 18.65. All right, heat three, the wrist roll. There's Kolb's time to beat. Lars Hedlund of Sweden's on the left, and our oldest competitor, Ivan Putski, on the right. He's 39 years old, a professional wrestler, native of Poland, arrived in the United States in 1950, and he's got his shoulders into this. Putski played pro football in Toronto and he went to camp with the Detroit Lions in 1967 and Hedlund is coming back. The big Swede is tough. Hedlund takes command and he's going to win this heat but both of these athletes are going to turn in excellent time. 26 for Hedlund. Putski comes on through. 30-11. That's the third best time so far. That man may turn out to be our sleeper. There is no quit in Lars Hedlund. Last two heats of the wrist roll, our defending strongman champion, Bruce Wilhelm on the right, Gus Rethwish on the left. Two 300-pounders, Wilhelm living in San Francisco, Gus in Honolulu. They break evenly. A year ago, Wilhelm did not even finish the wrist roll. Now he leads big Gus by a foot. Almost halfway up. John Kolb's record appears to be safe against these two. 24 already, the elapsed time. Two feet to go for Wilhelm, and Rethwich is coming back. Big Gus closing in. Look at those leg muscles also working in this event. Bruce, the winner of this heat. Now, Don Reinhardt leading after six weeks. Matched against Boris Jurassi in the green. Jurassi at 245 pounds, the hammer throw champion. Big Reinhardt trying to hold his lead in the overall competition. Look at Jurassi's hip movement. This is called the disco lift. Three feet to go for Reinhardt. Big Don's going to win this heat, but John Kolb's record is safe. Wilhelm's time, faster than Reinhardt, that will affect the overall competition. Jurassic is determined. He is going to finish. 54 seconds for Boris. John Kolb was unbelievable too, wasn't he? Ten points for finishing first. Hedlund, seven for being second in the wrist roll competition. So after seven events at Universal City, look how close it is at the top. Reinhardt ahead of Wilhelm. Ivan Putski gets on the board with that third place finish. Boris Jurassic here is being strapped in by Hal Conley and the tram that Boris and our other strong men will be pulling weighs a total of 7,800 pounds. We'll run this off in heats. Boris, for example, will be matched against John Matusak. Fastest time wins. Now, the end of the course, the finish line, is 100 feet away. That's 30 feet longer than it was a year ago when Bruce Wilhelm covered it in 14 seconds. Boris, how's that harness feel? Feels great. You're so terrific. <laughs> All right. Before we get started with our first heat, let's take a look at the standings. 
After seven events, our two biggest strongmen, Don Reinhout and Bruce Wilhelm, are locked in a furious duel. Less than a point separates those two giants, and here's an event where both should do well. Matusak is the closest to you. They're off. John Matusak has got his tram moving. Remember, that 7,800 pounds he's underway with. Jurassic can't even get started over there on the right. He's having a terrible time. Matusak staying low, driving through now. Gonna win this heat. Best time wins it. Jurassic's having difficulty. The judges are over there conferring on the side. Hal Conley and Terry Todd are bringing them together. Matusak will win this heat. Get it started was agonizing, wasn't it? Absolutely, Brenton. What a time for an interview right now. <laughs> it's, uh, I have to tell you, it was like trying to break up a double team with, uh, with Dave Casper and John Vela, for two of the best. But you got it broken up. Big John, nice job. I goal. did, Brent. Thanks a lot. Now, here's the ruling on Jurassic. He is going to be given a second run. I'm going to run the rest of this competition just against the clock. One man with the same tram. Gus Rethwich came through. His time is official, 38.26. Jurassi will be given a rest. He can come at the end of the competition. Don Reinhardt is ready now. Remember, he's running against the clock. And the time to beat Matusak's 31.17. Pressure time for Reinhardt as he goes out after the champion, Wilhelm. Good start by Reinhardt. He's staying high. Don Reinhardt is staying up there. He's really got it moving now, the last 30 feet. Don Reinhardt coming in with a good time. Look at the big guy. Oh, Reinhardt's down. Get in there quickly. They stopped the tram before it ran over him. Twenty, twenty-five. 25 seconds, so you're the unofficial leader, but more importantly, are you all right? Oh, I'm perfect. Real good. Right. Real good. Scuff here and lay down on the leg. <laughs> Just tired. <laughs> well, what was it like getting going, baby? Yeah, it's hard. That's awful hard. <laughs> and, and you stood up about midway through and you started oh. taking that stride. You were really coming down at the end. I tried anyway, I'll tell you. Well, I'll tell you what. Thank goodness these guys were able to jump out there and stop that coming at you because you were helpless down there on the asphalt. Get yourself dusted off and get a rest. Okay, Brett. Thank right. you very Good much. Luck. Thank you, sir. Okay. Reinhardt's time. Good. 25.75. Jack Wright came through in 60.42. So here's Brian Oldfield. Now, if Oldfield can get this 7,800-pound tram moving, he'll turn in a sensational time, too. He's quick. Having some difficulty, though, just getting it rolling. That's where the trouble is for the strong men. Now our shot put is underway. Reinhardt stayed up a little bit higher that last time. Oldfield's down low. Maybe the key is to stand up a bit. The crowd urging on the 33-year-old athlete from Woodside, California. He goes to a little bit of a swimming stroke at the end, doesn't he? Okay. Brian, that was a great breaststroke you, <laughs> you showed it at the end. It was situational, Brent. I just felt that that was necessary at that time to pull me across the line. And I need a transfusion. <laughs> a year ago, the winner of this event was our champion, Bruce Wilhelm. He's getting inside the harness, and Bruce will be yep. coming out next. Those are the times that he's shooting at. Reinhardt with the best heat so far of 25.75. The last three heats of the tram pull. 7,800 pounds for the defending champion, Bruce Wilhelm. And he is starting to take it seriously. He is under pressure this year from big Don Reinhardt, who already has turned in that time. 25.75, Wilhelm underway. Stays low at the start and then comes up. It's 100 feet to the finish line. Wilhelm shooting at that leading time of Don Reinhardt. He's got a shot at it, but he'll have to hurry. Reinhardt's lead holds up. 
So Wilhelm will not win it this year. 27-28, so you're just off of Reinhardt, just missing him by a couple of seconds that time, Bruce. It's tough, I'll say that. What advice would you give the rest of the guys coming after you now? <laughs> just pull as hard as they can and keep low. All right. Now you got two more events after this to still catch Reinhardt. Yeah, it's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Ivan Putzke will not pull because of a knee problem. Lars Hedlund and John Kolb still to come. Look who I found uh, backstage uh, checking out some of the equipment. The uh, current Mr. America, David Johns, who is in training for the Mr. Universe contest. And uh, David, looks though you'd like to come into this World's Strongest Men competition. Yeah, it looks very good. I was out checking the equipment out, but I would have liked to have been in it this year. But uh, I wouldn't want to break my training for the Mr. Universe. Uh, that's what I'm getting ready for in that Mr. Universe contest. Maybe next year. It looks very good. David, uh, training uh, for those bodybuilding uh, competitions, uh, what do you go through? How rigorous is it? Uh, you go through a lot, a lot of heavy training, you know, a lot of stress, you know, on the mind and on the body, you know. It's a lot different from competing in the Strongest Man Contest, even though you do have a lot of strength, you know, bodybuilders do have a lot of strength to compete, you know, right. and I would very much like to get into it, test my strength on it. I'd be right. glad to be here. Thanks, David. All right, thank you. And here is Lars Hedlund, who came into the trample, standing in third place overall, and remember, our four leaders will go into the tug-of-war. Next week's the refrigerator race, followed by the tug-of-war. Headland is underway. He's 29 years old, 6'3", 302 pounds from Sweden. He's a lieutenant in the Swedish Army. And he's been a bearcat so far in this competition. Chasing Ryan Houghton Wilhelm. Turning in a good time. Good run, Lars. 29.07. Excellent time. One of our leaders right now. You hit that finish line like an old track and field man, like you were busting through that tape. <laughs> You're going to take these events back to Sweden with you and say, hey, let's do it over here. Yeah, that's right. Okay, good. Thank you, Lars. And coming up now, John Kolb, 264 pounds. He gives away as much as 100 pounds to the bigger men. Look at Reinhardt's time, 25-7-5. Kolb of the Steeler. What's the muscles down there in the legs? That's why Franco Harris, Rocky Blyer, and Terry Bradshaw hits their wagon to this man. He has been a mainstay of Chuck Knoll's offensive line for years. Coming through now. Jason Reinhardt's sensational time. Stands in fourth place overall. John Kolb with a good run against the bigger athlete. 31-3-6 official for Kolb. And Boris Jurassi finished out of the money at 50.54. Don, your time held up, and you won the trample. Big 10 points for you. I'm really happy with that. I needed that awful bad. Now, how do you feel? Because you left us for a time. Uh, you don't seem any of the worse for wear here. No, I'm in, I'm in good shape, and hopefully we'll, we'll hold up through the rest of the competition. you got two events left now, the refrigerator race and the tug of war. Are you optimistic? Well, I'm, all I can say is I'll give it the best shot I got, Brett. Right. Let's hope it, uh, you know, pays off. By winning the trample, Reinhardt picks up three more points on Wilhelm. Hedlund is third, Matusak fourth, and Cole fifth. And after eight weeks overall, it's Reinhardt alone at the top over the defending champion. Hedlund is third, and Kolb is fourth, and you can see the rest of our field. He's a total of 425 pounds. From start to finish, it's 100 feet away. Heat one. Jack Wright is over there on the left. And on the right, the man who I feel, pound for pound, is the strongest man in this competition. Boris Jurassic. Weighs only 246 pounds. Now the key here is to get moving with those short steps, maintain balance, and pick up speed in the last 50 feet. Bruce Wilhelm blew out the field in this event a year ago. And it is Jurassi coming down. He's going to win our first heat. That's fine time for Boris Jurassi. 16.48. He's delighted by the effort as he wins the heat. The crowd here loves him. And the time for Wright is 21.21. Look at Boris. 
John Cole with the Pittsburgh Steelers getting ready for the second heat. And remember, our four leaders after the refrigerator race go to the tug of war next week. Brian O'Field is matched against Cole. John came into this event in fourth place. He won the wrist roll earlier, has cows on his farm, and says that milk in those cows is what strengthened up his hand. Mainstay of the Steelers' offensive line. He's on the right-hand side. He should do awfully well in this event. Short steps. Maintain balance. Keep the refrigerator right on the small of the back. He's taking a slight lead on Old Field, but it's close. 16-4-8 is what they're shooting at. That is the best time so far. And Kolb is coming across, and now he's got our best time. John Kolb with a good finish. Old Field's time is handed to me. 17.51. You can watch. See how our helpers stay close in case those refrigerators get out of control. And here's our winner of this heat and our new leader, John Kolb at 14.30. Lars Hedlund of Sweden is up next. Matched against the Oakland Raiders starting defensive end, John Matusak. Matusak, 27. He's over 300 pounds. Tommy Kono and the rest of the judges assume their positions. How Conley gets them underway. Matusek's long legs don't help him, but he's coming along. Hey, look at Lars Hedlund explode over here on the left. He's going to be our new leader. Look at the time that big Lars turns in, and Matusak is right there with him. Hedlund's time, 13.67. That's an incredible run. Matusak's in in 14.92. That's the third fastest, so they were both moving right along. Let's watch that heat again. There is Matusak on the right. But look at Hedlund over here on the left. Those short steps. And he's really got it rolling, doesn't he? He could have raced all day with that refrigerator on his back. Our new leader, a lieutenant in the Swedish Army, Lars Hedlund. Race. Don Reinhardt matched against Bruce Wilhelm. There's Don of Fredonia, New York. These two have been running 1-2 all along. If Wilhelm is to come back, he must do it here. I had a chance to talk to Bruce about coaching techniques. I noticed when I started paying my own bills that I pay very little attention to coaches unless I like them, <laughs> unless I feel they help me. People are always free with advice, truthfully. And I remember when I was wrestling in Oklahoma State, I uh, got into some static on this. And uh, I tell you, a, a coach is a wonderful person, a person that's needed, but he's not the one that's out there doing a particular event. And it's you and yourself when you're doing it, and so I, I try to think for myself. Okay, now we've got the refrigerator race, and we've got the tug of war coming up. You're trailing Don. It is close. How are your chances? Which is the most important? Well, as I see it, all three, the double elimination tug of war and the refrigerator race, are very important. We never know what happens in a competition like that, and that's what's so great about competition, because we can actually see people fold up like accordions. Uh, some people might pick off this refrigerator race that aren't expected. Myself, I personally expect to pick it off. However, I don't know. We've got some fabulous athletes, but I still think I'm better than all of them. Yes, Wilhelm is outspoken, much like Muhammad Ali, but he can back it up, too. He's on the right now in this showdown heat. There's Don on the left. And Wilhelm is off to a strong start. Won this event a year ago. He's going to capture the heat. Going for the good time now. Bruce Wilhelm out on top. Splendid effort by the defending champion. 14-1-9. Donnie's got to come along as quickly as he can. This is not a good run. This is going to hurt Reinhardt in the overall competition. Wilhelm now has turned this around completely in his favor. There's no question about these two men going into the tug of war. They're going to be among our four leaders, but here's the finish. And right here is where an athlete like Wilhelm backs up that braggadocio with a sensational performance. Reinhardt's time, 19.8. He won't get a single point in this race. 14-1-9, the second place big guy, and you handled your main man rather easily in that event. Well, like I said, he's a big whale. We're putting a harpoon to him. <laughs> but I just am amazed all these fabulous athletes we have this year. It really... Uh, it's discouraging. Well, they were coming down that course. That Lars Hedlund can really put it on, can he? Yeah, the big Swede is tough, no doubt about it. All right, well, the tug of war is next for you. Well, I'll say a prayer for him. Oh, okay, Bruce. <laughs> and it is an extremely confident Bruce Wilhelm who has jumped back into the lead because while Hedlund won the refrigerator race, Bruce was second. Reinhardt didn't pick up a single point. 
And after nine events, there are the four men who will go into the tug-of-war final with the points for that competition doubled. You look at the rest of our field, but now meet the four finalists. Bruce Wilhelm trying to defend his title. Big Don Reinhardt, who's been with him for nine straight weeks. Lars Hedlund, the surprise of our competition from Sweden. And John Cole for the Pittsburgh Steelers. to determine the champion of our world's strongest men competition this year and i suppose that it's only fitting that to determine the champion we have the simplest of all battlegrounds this will be a tug of war there are four finalists and to win it they're going to have to come back and win two events let's take a look now at the pairings for this final tug of war the first pair to go, Don Reinhardt against John Cole. Then it'll be Bruce Wilhelm against Lars Hedlund. And the winners will come back for the championship. There's how they stand. Gus Rethwish, for winding up fifth, receives $1,000 in bonus money, the rest of our field. Let's go back and show you how these four reached the final. The first event was the barrel lift. It was extremely awkward. Liquid and shot inside. And big Don Reinhardt immediately served notice to Bruce Wilhelm that he was out after his championship this year. 270 pounds. And against the clock, Reinhardt was able to lift it to the top and lock for 10 points in the first week of our competition. The second event, the steel bar bend. They got down to 11 16 inches in diameter. Lars Hedlund on the left and Bruce Wilhelm on the right. And these two 300 pounders wound up with a dead heat victory. They split first and second. The third event was the tire toss, and the favorite, the shot put champion, Brian Oldfield, heaved it 42 feet, 9 inches for the title, the car lift. Again, it was Big Don Reinhardt, 2,345 pounds. The fifth event, the wheelbarrow race, for the second year in a row, it was Big Bruce Wilhelm to the top first. The sixth event, the girl lift, and Reinhardt responded to Wilhelm's victory in the wheelbarrow race. 790 pounds, and it was Reinhardt of Fredonia, New York, getting it to the top for 10 points. The seventh event saw a new winner, member of the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line, John Kolb, an incredible 18.65 and 10 points for winding up first. The eighth event was the tram pull, and it was Reinhardt again, 25.75 seconds. Last week, the refrigerator race. Lars Hedlund, a surprise winner, 13.67. And John Kolb is now ready for a tug of war against big Don Reinhardt. Reinhardt weighing in at 344 pounds, Kolb at 267, a 60 second time limit. Reinhardt has got Kolb in trouble early, and he wins it in less than 10 seconds. So Big Don Reinhardt advances quickly to the championship round. I think you had a little bit of a weight at that. You know, let me tell you one thing. I respect this man a heck of a lot. He's a heck of a man. You know, and let me just say, it was really hard to go against John because I think an awful lot of them. I, didn't, I hate to make, make, make uh, bad faces at you, John. Uh, did he uh, yank a little bit harder than some of your cows, Big John? You, you know what? In the previous nine events, I've, I've noticed his wife over there, and she's patient, and she's worried. Just before this started, I looked over and she had a big smile on her mouth. <laughs> and here is why Cynthia was smiling. John Kolb didn't have a chance giving away that much weight. Big Donnie just yanking him across that dividing line. All right, second heat. Big Bruce Wilhelm now is matched against still another 300-pounder, Lars Hedlund of Sweden, a lieutenant in the Swedish Army. He's been the surprise of the entire competition. Now, note that piece of white tape there in the middle. If at the end of 60 seconds, neither of these athletes is across the dividing line, on whichever side that white tape rests, that will be declared the winning side. Wilhelm trying to hold on. Lars Hedlund. And Hedlund is not giving away a thing, is he? 6'3", 302 pounds on the left. He's 29 years old. Wilhelm is 31 years old. Strength against strength. 
30 seconds to go. And they are still dead even. Headland coming back. Now it's Wilhelm with a slight lead. Whichever of these athletes plays the clock with that final burst in the last 10 seconds, he may be able to come away with a victory. Wilhelm's got Headland in trouble. And it is Lars who pulls back. Nine seconds. Look at Wilhelm. He's rusting for one final burst. Here it is. Two seconds. And Wilhelm wins with that final yank. And Bruce Wilhelm goes into the final, but he is going to be a tired competitor. Lars Hedlund gave Bruce all he wanted and more in that competition. Swedish athlete gave you some competition that time. Yeah. I'm beat. I don't like this. <sighs> I'm tired. I'm gassed. I need a rest. Go get it, because you got to come back one more I know. time. Okay. All right. A different view of Wilhelm's victory. From behind, watch the 320-pound champion. Headland's in trouble. Then Lars pulls back, and Bruce decides to wait until Hal Conley says only five seconds remain. Then the one final burst gets the white tape over on his side, and we'll be back with the championship. Who's the king of the strong men? We're about to find out. For winding up third overall, Lars Hedlund of Sweden picks up $5,000 in bonus money. John Kolb is fourth, $2,000 to him. For nine and a half events, the two biggest men have been stalking each other. Don Reinhardt on my left, Bruce Wilhelm on my right, and now it has all come down to one tug of war. Don, how do you feel? Well, I'm confident. Uh, just hope to do the very best I can, Brett. Bruce, how about you? Well, I have to be a little more humble this year than last. It's going to be tough. I feel gassed. I went the, the full minute where Don just pulled his man across. Yeah, I, think he's I was called the fat boy, so I'm the one who should be out of shape, not you, Bruce. So we'll see who's the fat one, okay? <laughs> well, I, I say if that's a challenge, Don, I gladly accept it because you still are the fat boy. Here we go. All down to one tug of war. And I detect just a touch of animosity this time, too. No love lost at all between these two. They have been dueling each other since week one. Reinhardt determined to take this title back to upstate New York. Wilhelm wants to keep it right here in California. 60 second time limit. Hal Conley will start the showdown. Reinhardt, 344 pounds. Wilhelm, 320. Underway. Reinhardt goes down to establish a base. Wilhelm appears to be in trouble early. He is. He'll have to struggle back. Reinhardt's got a chance to win it right here. One more yank, and he can get Wilhelm across, but Bruce is now pulling back. Now he's in trouble again. Reinhardt's down. Reinhardt may not be able to stop it. Reinhardt's going to lose it. He's down and out. How Conley has declared Wilhelm the winner. When Reinhardt went down, he didn't know where the dividing line was. Looked up at Hal Conley, and Wilhelm gave it one more yank. Well, Bruce? Yeah, I got a lot to say now. There's no doubt about it. We've proven that a weight train athlete can beat a fat man, can beat a football player, professional wrestler. The best athlete is here. There's no doubt about it. That's it. All right. Bruce Wilhelm, our champion. And with it, a check for $10,000 in bonus money, $7,000 to Don Reinhardt. So for the second straight year, we present this World's Strongest Men trophy to our champion, Bruce Wilhelm. And for all our competitors, you guys did a marvelous job. But let's hear it from you for Bruce Wilhelm for the hey, effort man. he put out. Bruce, congratulations. Well, I, I want to I wanna really say something. That uh, would be a change. <laughs> <laughs> something more mellow. Here, I'll hold it. There. All right, go right ahead. Uh, I guess it really kind of started last year when we started getting down on everybody's case, but I kind of want them in the bridges here. We got a lot of fine athletes. It was a lot tougher than last year. You know, I was really very fortunate once again to win because Don is a superior athlete, a fabulous athlete, just as all these gentlemen are. I want to take my hat off to him, but I still think I'm better. <laughs> and so, from Universal City for the World's Strongest Men Competition.